lines, right? Back in November, they were splitting. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Yes, and yeah. the Ascension Bridge and everything. And that happened, yeah. That she was talking about that. Uh, the Ascension Bridge was, she's also talking about how we also will see two moons because the moon, it looks like the timelines are splitting. So like literally there was a time I remember in 2022 where um, that summer I was, there, you were seeing two moons. So some people would literally see two moons next to each other. Like the moon would be here and it'd be a second moon and it almost would be symbolic of the, of the timeline splitting. But basically yeah. we're seeing two moons. It's literally two realities splitting from each other. Um, the Ascension Bridge Project. So that was, yeah. uh, that's fascinating when I, <laughs> When you when you see that actually in person and you relate that to that material, um, yeah. So, so yeah, really we, we can see we can see those two timelines splitting, right? And I guess it's going to yeah. get it's going to get more and more separate. Right now, you know, there was there was that time that it was coming, and so you could almost walk both between it. But now people have to make that they've got to they've got to make the move. Well, go, right. I'm so, you to go ahead and light your sage. So in case we start talking dirty, you can clean it up. <laughs> right. Clean up, clean it up. Right. We clean Smudge it up. right behind it. Wax on, wax off, you know. We're, yeah, we're smudging <laughs> it up. I'm, I'm smudging the mic in case I say something dirty. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, because... Uh, people right now are seeing two timelines right now you have some people who are totally oblivious to what's happening in their reality and they're literally seeing the world crumble in front of them um and all the weirdness of the world and then you have people who are literally seeing above all that and they're seeing higher timelines they're seeing this new sun that's coming out they're seeing um uh, abundance they're seeing future events they're having significant experiences with meta-terrestrials um they're having their memory recalls and they're seeing future timelines. Um, so that's happening. It's 100% happening. And then We're you have like people that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mortgage paid off. Car people. Just falling out of the sky. Because my car yeah. got hit by a big piece of rubber and boom, cracked the. You know, when you're almost about to be done paying for your car. Mm -hmm. And then bam. And then. And then, and then all of a sudden, they just, that car. happens. And I'm like, your car God, told I see a brand new right. car. I don't know how you about to give me this SUV. I know you want me riding smooth. <laughs> I know you want me riding smooth. <laughs> Show me, God, this, this new slick vehicle, because I do deserve it. I'm going to say it. <laughs> I'm open to receive. I'm open Whoa. to receive. That it will be done. So it is. <laughs> and it's good on gas, too. It's really good on gas. I can drive it all the way to Egypt. Just escalate. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what else are they seeing? What, what else the with the astrology? I'm just going to be comic relief for today. This is one of my alter egos. So <laughs> Ashana Dean, uh, material. Um, I mean, we've already were seeing the the Paldorian birthing contracts, which is showing basically the indigo star seeds. They're actually coming into right because a lot of people, um, all the indigos are our parents, and some of them are our brothers and sisters, and family members, friends, or, or ourselves, and they're coming into light right now, raising the vibrations of the planet and bringing us to a consistent level for the rest of humanity to kind of anchor in. And that's interesting enough because you're seeing all types of people now coming out the woodwork with this light research and um, um, energy affecting the collective on another level. So like, it's all types of I people, like people, people I wouldn't even have thought this. that were into that. So I think people should know this <laughs> because like, they look at their kids, their kids mm -hmm. are playing video games or watching crazy movies and watching music that maybe they don't approve of. And they're like, oh no, my kids aren't going to make it. And it's like, leave your kids alone. <laughs> because yeah, like Sherry's yeah. story, right. Sherry Div Band, even Lily, we talked to Lily the other day, right, Terry? And it was like, just living their lives. And then one day they're just like, oh, I'm awake now. And going yeah. 190 miles an hour. So we can yeah. never really judge what that what is going to happen. And I've, Dab, I know you remember 2022. Oh. I said that. I said, you can't judge 
telling people to wake up because they're going to pass you no, by. No, can't. You can't force that to happen. It's they a yes. Just live your life by. and it's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we're seeing these. Mm -hmm. Just live your life. Passion. It's going to happen, man. When these kids yeah. pop up. Dude, the experiences are nuts. They're going to do their thing. So Coming out of nowhere. Faithful and having hope in your kids. And woo. I was actually told in a yeah. reading that my son would be dormant at the time because he was going to be the most relaxed. I mean, this kid right here, every time I'm on the live, he's playing a game. He's not. He's, it's insane. But yeah, he's chill. I was. I was told that he would be working so hard in the future that he chose this lifetime to be completely alone. And I'll tell you, ever since he was three, he said he never wanted siblings. He never wanted me to have any more kids. Uh, and he stays at his dad's house uh, in between my house. And he likes that solitude. Mm -hmm. Because when he gets started, they said he was mm -hmm. going to be so busy that he chose to have a... Um, how do you say? Like basically being a state uh, of space. Easier. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So back up, watch out for um, the kids. The kids are coming. Yeah, that's so really interesting. What's gonna happen? <laughs> they are, and they're here. They're already here. I mean, these kids coming out right now with this information, the rainbow children, the crystal children that are all activated. It's gonna surprise you. And um it's just interesting that um the, how it affects us just in our regular lives because we're just you're supposed to just live your life think about living in the now not live in the past or the future but to live in the now and that's the best best outcome for yourself to be exposed to these higher timelines because now you're already living in higher business so just live your life and um with good intent and love and unconditional love and Boom, those things will happen. It'll just happen right. It'll happen all of a sudden. You'll, you'll just you'll just have a eureka moment. That's kind of what happened to me. Like I literally was living my life and um they kind of came, these metaterrestrial beings came and just literally just it intervened in my life and changed my life like instantly. <laughs> like well, you're, instant you're buttons, like, like you know, because uh, you're not saying extra terrestrial, you're saying meta terrestrial. What's why are you using that? Yeah, word? metas. So meta, meta terrestrials are beings that don't um, have a physical body. They defy space and time, and they literally are. Um, they time to them doesn't exist, so they're in the past, present, and future all at once when they interact with you. So they're in your past timeline, they're in your future timeline, and they're in your present timeline. At the same time. find this so they know exactly where you're going to be. Meta. Yeah. Well, Where did I find Metaterrestrial from? Um, uh, it came to me, dude, like one time, Metaterrestrial. Okay, and, I, I and they talk about Metaterrestrial. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then, so extraterrestrial, I, I found out also means uh, beings from extra lands in Terra. So extra, extra Terra being Terra of the lands, terrestrial being outside the lands. Those beings are the ones that are like flesh and blood. Um, like, um, like us, but they, they have a physical body. These meta terrestrials, they defy time and space. Like they literally can manifest in some place and then disappear in that same moment and then see you again a couple of days later and be exactly where they need to be at the exact time. It's very interesting. So they they living outside of timelines, right? They're 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 multi-dimensional yeah. beings, right? They're not, they are not yeah. stuck to a third dimension or a fifth dimension. They are multi-dimensional, and so they can they're they're mm -hmm. able to live outside of timelines and and even outside of the universe, right? Because they can be in yes. any place within the within creation at any time, right? So they can pop in. Yes. That's that's how they know how to communicate with us. Absolutely. You're very Absolutely. Yeah, and you're and you're communicating with them because they are, or you are part of their soul family, or part of their uh, part. You know, because there's there's different groups, right? And so the ones that you communicate might might be different than I would communicate, or it might be the same. Just depends on where we are within uh, within 
the hierarchical structure, you know, where our soul is, is, is part of, you know, we, we often think that, you know, we're, we're lowly here, but we're not, we're part of something much grander than that. So we're yes. part of that. Oh, medicine. of course. And that's the thing, like when you experience it, you'll know, you realize it, man, you're like, man, these, this is crazy. Like, how are they able to be in the exact location? Um, at the right time and make it a synchronicity every time if they don't, if they're not outside of space and time, you know? So, um, that's the key is the fact that they give you those synchronicities to let you know, um, that they can place yourself on your timeline at any time, um, to, for you to intervene and interact with them or to have those synchronicities for you to see the one, one, one sort of the 12, 12s yeah. or the different things that let you know that they're around. Well, you said something that's earlier before we got on here um i'll just tell you this so someone asked me they said hey have you interviewed megan and i and they were like i thought you did but i can't remember and they said well sometimes mm -hmm. i can't tell my sleeping life from my waking life and i had to tell her because i want to tell you all of the examples now steve we did the interview with steve and he said he got online and he said, I'm sorry, did I miss our appointment? Did I miss our interview? And I was like, Steve, no, we actually did the interview. Now I had my own thing where I was asleep and I kept waking up thinking, dang, how could I forget I already interviewed Mark and I haven't. And I kept dreaming, I need to ask Sherry because I never asked Mark. And then it was like a whole nother thing where someone else, they didn't know whether they had dreamed it, whether it was true or not. So what, what's going on? Because mm. can you explain this away with your Um, So you could be having, timelines could be merging too. So um, there are multiple timelines that have happened and are simultaneously happening that are also merging, coming down into coherence. And that's where we get the deja vu's coming from. So a lot of us are remembering events that probably didn't even happen in this timeline, but um, maybe happened. And then also it affects with our astral um, in the astral as well. Like when we sleep um, and inherit, some people travel to these timelines, I believe when they're sleeping. So they like see certain things in dreams. And I have a game player <laughs> thing that goes on. So if I know that I'm about to do something with oh, okay. somebody like, I get the instructions or I get like a walkthrough in my sleep. Mm -hmm. So I do, ah, interviews interesting. In, I do interviews in my sleep ahead of time sometimes. Right. That's interesting. So you actually jump the timeline, interview them in the, in the astral type of deal, get the information from what you need to know what you're doing when into this reality. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's like a I, I believe that that's like your secret intel. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I've I've heard of people doing that, like in the and and just getting their intel before they go really into one. the meat and potato. Yeah. That's a ready player one thing. A ready, ready player like, one. Sticking into the game. I'm plugging into the game. Yeah. Did you right. used to do that too? Right. When you when you go to sleep, you're like, you know, you had a crazy dream in the past. And you're like, okay, I'm going back. We're gonna fucking finish this. Like <laughs> and you're like, zoom, yeah. zoom yeah. get in. Like, yeah, <laughs> it is. yeah all the time. I, I I'll wake up and uh, I'll have a direct experience with that. Now, I haven't dreamed in a few years, but um, since I've been interacting with them, but that, but I do remember sir, the dreams I do ha I have had since those that that get me interacting with them the first time, um are so vivid that like, yeah, it's like those moments where you're like, I was like, I want to go back to sleep. And it's like, I'll just immediately try to go back to sleep. And it, it, it's so hard to get the style back into that. But, right. um, I feel like they have me working up there doing a lot of things. Cause they, they told me that, that they weren't going to have me remember whatever I was doing. Um, to, to save it for down here and whatever downloads I get down here. Um, you might be in the waiting room. I'm going to tell you what I also discovered that I the have waiting a waiting room. I have a waiting room in my sleep where I'm in here and I'm mm -hmm. just like sitting here and nothing's happening. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like nothing's happening. Why am I sitting in here? Like 
But what is happening is that's a part of the consciousness. And then the other part is doing whatever. And you're like, just sitting here, like what's going on. Right. I'm in the waiting right. room. So we break off of the practice. To... Yeah. To, to, to see yet what, what it's not the time yet. Because timing is everything. Even though we invented time, there's a time and place for everything to happen. And it happens systematically and like in a pattern. So sometimes they put us in that waiting room because we have to, we have to kind of like wait till everything is ready, like to go out on stage until they call our name or until it's yeah. ready for us to be on cue. We're right with one thing, you know. A lot of and times, then, and they're like, okay, enter in, enter in, Erica, you know. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of times we have to wait for other things to happen before it can happen for us. Right? Is like we can't control. Mm -hmm. We might want to manifest something. We might have there. There's a plan. For you know, but but other people have to do pull their part of the you know, load part of first. A part of your consciousness because we don't want you coming back here blabbing about what you just did. You have this part. Mm -hmm. Those things where you remember the dream, you're out here in the waiting room because you can't mm -hmm. know where you were last night. You're not allowed to know right. that information. And it always boggled me, like, what are they actually, like, that's, like, that makes sense, because, anything? like, yeah. yeah, yeah, like, why can't I remember these things and experiences, and then I'm like, well, maybe because they don't, they don't want me to know, like, of what I was doing, or maybe, or what I had to do, because, you know, it, it's, it's so complex See? for reality that. Now, that taps into <laughs> why some people maybe maybe some of the regression or some of the hypnosis, not that it's bad, but maybe some things you're not supposed to be remembering. Like when people say, well, what's your star family? And they kind of want to like know all this information about you or you want to know all this stuff. And like, should you be tapping into all of that all the time? Like it gets to be like you say, not present, but constantly digging through the fragments and the timelines, like, how many fragments are we supposed to heal? Like, are we are we going so far to do so much that we could be undoing the job that we're supposed to be doing? Is that going to inter I'm going to interject here because I, when I do Akashic Journeys, it's the person's higher self that decides what the person needs to do. It's not like me taking somebody to a different timeline it's that higher self of of like dab it with you it was your higher self that took you to where you needed to go so those those memories are important do you have to know about something else do, you know like do i have to say well go back to i don't know july 1999 do you need to do that you know, like whose agenda is that serving then when you're saying something specific? But if you are asking the higher self what is the appropriate thing for the person to, to know, then that guidance is important because that's that's helping with their ascension process or waking certain aspects up of Absolutely. theirs. Yeah, that makes that makes Absolutely. a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. A I lot mean, of times too, we, we have like, to uh, kind of look at it like that too. We were hanging out with some of your friends and she wanted to be like, ask me a question. And you know, she was trying to dig into business. And a lot of times though, like I'll say before anybody, even if I'm not coming to a person for reasons, because people could be so busy. I'm gonna say that. That's the nice way to say it, right? They're just real busy. You can say no. That's the nice way. They be digging all in your laundry <laughs> when you didn't give them permission. They want to go in your coffee, what you smell like, what you ate today, yeah, everything. They, so they want to be in your business. Somebody is really like kind of burdening me with something, a reading of some sort that I don't really want. I'll just, I'll ask for the doors to be locked and only give them. You know, I'll put that request <laughs> out. Only let them. Da 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 da. Keep it light. Right. Don't don't let them right. all in the back door. You got it. You got it, guys. <laughs> no, don't, don't put don't let them in the back door. <laughs> and so I keep it right. Keep it superficial when I'm not comfortable. Keep your rope free. 
Yeah, I don't want people all in my laundry. <laughs> well, yeah, because like it's your consent, you know, and and your intent, your intentions are everything. And then it's your consent. So, like, if you don't really consent to a lot of the things that people are trying to prod and whatever that individual is doing, um, their intention could be bad of what they're prodding in an information for. They either try to change your timeline or it could be an attachment with them because they have an attachment. Um, and a lot of our close friends and family members are unaware that they have these uh, attachments that are trying to get us off of our own timeline these these yeah, negative they attachments have a, so, they have a mission that their subconscious or super conscious is aware of that their conscious mind is not aware that they're actually on this mission because there are some interrogators mm -hmm. here absolutely here oh my gosh yeah absolutely 100 percent. and that's the that's the thing man there are mm -hmm. people struggling with sleep paralysis, like grown adults. I did not know that. I remember in childhood, we had that, right? But in my adult waking life, I've not had sleep paralysis. And I was just in Walmart and the girl was talking about that it's so bad that she has to have treatment for sleep paralysis. It's actually getting really? worse I, as uh, an adult. I've had it before, but like not like consistently. I woke up like, or my body, I would wake up in my body, but like, I wouldn't be able to move. And like, I have to like, like roll back and forth, like several times. And then I can move my body. It's like your brain wakes up before your body. And I call that like, uh, it's like a drink or like, you know, you, you fall asleep, but like you, you, you come back from your, your traveling from another dimension or whatever reality. And then you're in your body before your, the rest of your body can wake up, get in there first. <laughs> so. It's, um, so we always, I don't know when we that is in North lot. Carolina, we call that that the hag was riding you, like that a witch is in control of your space at that time. That's what we grew up learning. And that could just be some spooky thing that we learned in South Carolina, but why would that I be? I don't know. See, Nowadays, so here's people, the thing about the hag. You guys know about that? People cast each other and everything. Do you know about no, that? No, I never knew about that. Oh, okay. So let's talk about the hag. So what happens is there's maybe a person who has a grudge or something against you, and they're um like, like maybe a voodoo. Wish harm, and um and so they talk about like witches used to be able to like unzip their skin, and so I'm guessing that must be what um what do you call it? Skinwalkers, whatever you call it, the walkers. Like yeah. So they yeah. Would say yeah. that if Something like that is happening and someone's and it could be that they give you a gift because you have to be careful of people giving you things to put inside your house because then they can come inside your house like remote view. Oh my now God. we would call yeah. that remote viewing, but that's not what we used to we didn't know it was that was the term remote mm -hmm. viewing. But that when people give you something in exchange, mm -hmm. basically you're making an agreement in the higher realm that that person you're giving them permission to welcome them into your space because you accepted the gift. And so there's even things where you yeah. certain spells where people can give you, say, a house plant, but they might put something in the bottom of the plant. It could be written in a letter mm -hmm. or something like that, and it could be a spell where they put it in. So now you have this inside your house, and now they're welcome inside your house. So this energy or spirit is yeah. inside your house. But um, they used to talk about <clears throat> people who could unzip their skin and mm. this is get putting salt on your doorstep so that if somebody has something against you and you think that's the person you invite them to your house but you lay a broom down and then if they can't step across the broom or the salt then you know it's them or that's why we sprinkle salt at the door something to like block their energy from coming over but this is so you can find out who it is so you invite them and kind of basically like set this trap, but and supposedly this is the part of what that sleep paralysis is about is someone actually sending ill will or ill intent towards you or something like that. So I'm surprised that, okay. Interesting. It's just my South Carolina mm. thing. So. Interesting. No, I, I haven't heard that. I haven't heard it like that before, but that's interesting because uh, that goes along with voodoo and, um, and also candle magic where they used to do like that. And that could actually tell you too, like they say, when you, when you light candles up during the candle magic, if you get that like restriction with the, with uh, the black candle sparking, that means somebody's putting something against you. And um, so, and there are people that do this. So like, 
we got to be aware of that. Like, you know, that there are people that practice these old practices of energy en energetic exchange. And that's an energetic exchange right there where you're giving somebody something and they have the intent to do something else, even nefarious or not. Yeah. But, um, you know, without your consent. <clears throat> and, um, that's why when you're, when you're tapping into these higher timelines and everything and these, these higher densities, and vibrations you kind of get protected from that stuff you kind of see that stuff coming way before it even happens so um like they'll show the red flag to you um that they're that there are this type of person to be nefarious so you won't fall into a trap where they're like you know sending voodoo dolls and and uh <laughs> all this type of magic in your household it's, funny um, it's kind of like an energetic barrier field. Because mm -hmm. all of a sudden that, I mean, three that, videos about stuff like this popped up on the timeline too, about even about the burial. Did you watch the video on um, the funerals and the burials? Like, why do we put a person in a box, mm -hmm. then put them in a steel vault and then put them in the ground? Does I that see. make any sense? Yes. We are so sense. off topic today, right. but yeah, we're just doing this. We've been doing this for years and they, they um yeah you don't let even let them get back and then we embalm them so they they can't even um go back one with the earth the body just still you know it just still stays there we mummify that. them um, I asked about that and they said it's like you know? not not supposed to be that invasive it doesn't slow down their process but that doesn't make any sense I think funerals have been sold for the fear of going into the ground so help build people's fear of death and then cater to it as a market to sell them a box to put in you're dead you're well it, and you know yeah. it's yeah it's it. different it's funny with different religious practices and different groups of people what they will believe in i mean some people absolutely believe in cremation and other people absolutely believe that the body has to go in the ground but if within three days and other people say no it's got to be embalmed and no you don't have the funeral until seven days later and so you have these different religious groups who have these different belief systems and it's it's like where does this come from but we can we can go back and we can see that uh you know um the, the body needs to, it needs three days for the consciousness to leave the body. So, so yeah. therefore, if you're putting the body in the earth within three days, you're not allowing the body, the, the consciousness to leave the body, the, 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 mm -hmm. the body consciousness, not the, not the soul consciousness, but the body consciousness. So if you're not allowing that to happen, or if you're embalming them right away, what there now, there are some beliefs that say that you um, wait for three days and then you have, then you do a cremation. I, I think that even Ashiana Dean covered that in one of her, in one of the books and Voyagers are, are one of the stuff, but it's like, yeah, this is what I knew, but the different beliefs and the religious beliefs and they're so stuck with certain ways that they, it, it, because this mm -hmm. is what they've been told. Right. So mm -hmm. it's absolutely. interesting. Right. And some yeah. people keep it in the living room for oh, a week or maybe even two. Like that was mind blowing. Right. That, um, the Spanish right. or the, like Mexico and stuff that they keep the person propped up in the living room. I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, it's a little weird. It's a little it weird with weird. that. I mean, I don't know how I'm still having, having a body I mean, sitting there looking at I mean, me. Like, point, this. Though, but <laughs> like when my grandma passed, I made it a point to touch her and to just sit with her and like look at her and, you know, people want to actually sit with that body. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it, I think that it seems to be a more natural, a more, for some reason, that's a more appealing thing to actually, because we need to not be afraid of dead people. Like people shouldn't be scared of graveyards and they shouldn't be scared of death and they shouldn't be scared of dead people. You know what I mean? Like dead bodies. 
But it seems right. like it should be uh, it should be celebrated zombie. because uh, it's life after death, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it should be celebrated. Yeah, and yeah. They, they they made it a big business. They made it a big business. They had to. I mean, that's they were going along with it, and and they they wanted to profit off of everything in our lives. So yeah. they part of the, the business your, is the business. I'm changing the subject. Loving your eyeshadow, Terry, with your new glasses. Oh, thank you. <laughs> looking like you're on a L'Oreal commercial or something. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, because as she got closer, I could see the the eyes. Oh, you can see it. Oh, okay. Yes. Go sparkle. It opens up a whole new world. Yeah. yeah. I like the glasses. I used to have okay, yeah. they corrected my vision from this and then sun gazing. Now I'm seeing all types of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I used to Did have you look at the eclipse? Do you, do you sun ga- you, how long have you been sun gazing? Um, I did look at the eclipse and I did uh, sun gaze for I've been sun gazing for about Two to, two to three years on and off. Every other morning, so I'll get up in the morning, watch the sun come up. Um, sometimes I go outside, like and watch it set during golden hour for a couple minutes, uh-huh. and I would record it. Mhm. Yeah. Golden hours around. And so you seven, wa- you watch the eclipse, seven. and you didn't, and nothing amazingly strange happened to you. You didn't lose your eyesight. Oh. No, didn't lose my eyesight. Saw a crazy portal open up with the sun. There was a ring around the sun that day, a huge rainbow right. ring. I got a picture of it and everything. Um, and uh, so that was cool. And uh, I didn't have any uh, uh, abnormal growths or my eyes didn't come out my skull. <laughs> it was all good. It was uh, actually, <laughs> I think the real, the real energetic thing happened a couple of days before. Um, that's when the um, galactic alignment was happening. So. Um, oh yeah, the parade. Like a day planet. or two before the eclipse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that just happened. That just happened two days ago. Yeah. It's still happening now. I mean, they're still aligned. Um, the parade of planets, and that's happening right now. So we're we're ascending into a higher timeline now with that energy flow. Okay, so that's what we're going to ask you about. Since you're the astrologer, how is that uh, the these these alignments of these six planets? I think. Uh, there's six planets, and they're supposed to happen again at the end of the year with seven planets, right? Yeah, so these six planets are are major planets, and they're markers, right? They're markers into our reality. So a lot of it's going to bring in higher energies, consciousness, um, divine, um, divine influences, synchronicities. Um, it's a major shift in our evolution because this alignment hasn't happened in thousands of years. So... Um, the right. fact that these planets are all aligning, that each planet has a significant energy kind of release, it's going to allow so much things happening in the background for us that um, I wouldn't be surprised if this elevates a lot of people's consciousness to another, to the next, to the newer timeline, to the higher timeline that we're all, uh, that we're all ascending to. Because that's right. uh, kind of like opens the door a little wider for more people to walk in the door and are ready to to walk in that door. Uh, um, the door has been open, but it allows us to walk in a little bit, a little more, more people to walk in it. <laughs> and it's um, interesting. You, know? you haven't seen it in years. No, it's been cloudy here. So never got a chance to see the, the alignment. Did you see the alignment? I actually didn't see the alignment because, but I was up. So that was the night where we had that, uh, solar flare and, um, you know, you, you're either going to be energized or sleep. And I woke up at three, like three thirty-three on the dot, and just couldn't go back to sleep. And, and was on t- talking about uh, spirituality and, with a couple friends on TikTok and one of their lives. And it was a little cloudy for me, so I just didn't even go outside. But um, I heard it was actually pretty cool looking, and you could only see it at like five in the morning or something like that. At least in yeah. in the uh, East Coast. Yeah, <clears throat> so I don't know. It was cl- it was cloudy and rainy here, so. I know that we didn't get a chance to oh. to see it. Yeah. So, so you, um, but it, you know, talking about people awakening, there is um, um, one of the books by Lisa Royal Holt. Uh, she talked about. Um, I, I think she was talking with one of her um, uh, 
the, the um, ET that she channels, um, I believe it was Germaine. And um, they were talking about how when planets, um, there's, a, there's a team that comes to help during the awakening of it into extraterrestrial, uh, uh, that awareness. And um, she said that in one, it, that it happened, you know, that they had experienced that, that the planet was not awakening as it was supposed to. Um, they, they tried to send little messages. And so they finally resorted to having a mass dream for everybody to have the same dream. And that helped the, you know, everybody woke up the next morning, um, you know, mm -hmm. different, I guess, different time zones, but they had this mass dream and there, it was brought into their awareness about the, um, about extraterrestrial life. And then they were able to have the other, uh, you know, the other groups, People come in from from the stars, and people were accepting of them because they had this mass dream. So I find that kind of interesting because, um, you know, the the powers that be are trying to hide all of this information. But if it's going to come out, it's going to come out because the higher energies are not going to let those the lower ones uh, uh, control too much longer. So you know. That's why right. we're waking up. We're waking up. But if we don't wake up fast enough, then um, they will take it into another, take it to the next level. Their own, which is, I think it's the solar flare event because um, they're talking about <laughs> yeah. still having this flare, which where people aren't, aren't going to realize what the flare event is. It's literally something that's going to be elegant. You're not even going to notice it unless you're outside and it's just going to be really bright. Sun it might feel a little warm to the warm being out there, and then all of a sudden you're just gonna it's just gonna cleanse everything. Um, so that's mm -hmm. what they're talking about um, on that happening. And I, I feel like since the sun is conscious and the Earth's a conscious being too, um, they're constantly talking to us and showing us things, and that that's definitely going to happen. Like it's actually has been happening. Um, to certain individuals already these people have been getting these mini flares where they'll the sun will send them a bunch of light codes and wake them up and have these crazy experiences with awakenings like it happened to me where that's where i saw my face in the clouds um that one time where it xeroxed my face literally in the clouds after watching one of these flare-ups from the sun and and um i was freaking out and i actually took a picture of it because i didn't think people would believe me <laughs> at that time and then, and then I had started, ever since that happened, I started seeing orbs, seeing galactic glitter. So I know if it's happening to me, it's happening to other individuals. Um, and that's how complex and, and strategic and conscious our sun is. Like it can like pinpoint everybody around the earth and send them light codes and certain information and um, wake up individuals, certain individuals it needs to. And, and it's, it's really precise, like a surgeon. And it's really interesting that uh, what you say about the mass stream thing, because that kind of makes sense too. Um, you, you have to do it all in waves. You have to do it kind of all at once to kind of wake everyone up. And what's the best way to do it, but to the purge, purge out the darkness with the light. Right. Right. Well, you saying that, that makes sense why cultures worship the sun, right? Because they had direct communication mm -hmm. with it. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. Like, like you're standing mm -hmm. here going, they were talking oh, to you. you know, like, and bathing in it because you're directly communicating with it. But I think at this point, we don't think of trying to communicate with the sun. What if we thought about that? Like, there's sun gazing. Right. And that's communication with the sun. Yeah. But what about directly just communicating with your sun? Because see, we're, we're doing the meditation and you say visualize a ball of light around your body. But then you're also visualizing mm -hmm. the light coming up into your body. But we never mm -hmm. make the connection of, oh, yeah, this is us kicking it with the sun. Right. Uh, like wow. I said, the sun's a, a conscious entity within itself. So is the earth. Mm -hmm. they're, they're both conscious. So, so they and, both and, work and, with and each it, other, and it happens. Yeah. Those things happen. And, and, and it's interesting how um, the energies don't want us to 
acknowledge the sun. So what do we do? Oh, you're going to get skin cancer. Oh, you got to wear sunscreen. Oh, you got to wear sunglasses. Oh, you got to stay out of the sun. But meanwhile, we are, the sun is our life giver, right? We can't, we, we, yeah. we need water and we need the sun. You know, those are the things that we need. And, and yet they're trying to, and what was it that, that, certain person was wanting to do because of global warming we're going to block off the sun are you talking about bill gates yeah she's like are you talking about bill gates <laughs> identify identify <laughs> Yeah, they want to take the sun away from it. <laughs> they want to take the sun away. Right. I'm telling oh my god! Telling, telling. Tell it how it is, Jaguar. <laughs> oh my god! Call me, girl. Call oh. me. I was on your Facebook. I was trying to reach out. <laughs> I really was. right. <laughs> She's awesome. She's awesome, man. I, I like this is the year of exposure. Everything's coming out. Everybody's is seeing the truth, and everything's it's happening at once. You have an all the timelines merging. You have an, all the celebrities yeah. getting exposed. You got. Mm hmm. Yeah. The, the, this is the year. Decade this is the, of the mouth. Decade yes. of the mouth. So yeah. if you thought that you had to hide your underwear before. Boy, your underwear will be exposed. You know, <laughs> you're getting all that dirty laundry. Dirty laundry, everything. Stop. You better watch everything's your coming clothes. out, right? And it's gonna be like this for a minute, ten years. You're right. Yeah, ten, ten years. years of this. But but most of the most of the brunt of this is coming out. Like most of the heavy hitting stuff. I mean, we're gonna be forever learning about stuff coming out. But most of the heavy stuff already. The 2024 already is coming out with a bang. We're not even halfway through the. Through the year yet. My first thought was you're gonna be frazzled, and it made me think about frazzled drip. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk dirty. Anyway, yeah, dirty that, that's dirty. coming out soon too. That's coming out soon too. Everybody knows Uma. about that. <laughs> Miss Dracula. Uma Abedin. Uma Uma. Uma yeah. Abedin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reptilian that elite. Is in my brain, and I don't even. I don't even know why. I don't even know why. I don't know either. I feel like she's uh, where the heck was she from? I I know who she's from, but I'm not saying where is she actually from. Like, who my is? Is she from like the Middle East or? I don't like, know. I think her, I think she is. is. Oh, interesting. Hillary like Clinton. royal family, That's like over there. No. Clinton, yeah, Clinton's girlfriend whose husband Anthony Weiner was laying in isn't, bed. Isn't with a that child. Who, who Bradley Cooper is going out with? Oh my god, I saw that. Oh my god, that's so disgusting. Did you know that? Interesting. Oh, yeah, god. I found that out. I remember finding that out, and I, I ended up not wanting to watch The Hangover no more. None of that. Once you start seeing celebrities with other celebrities. And it's just like, you know what I mean? And the gossip is getting real. They're talking about everybody out here. Everybody getting exposed. Everybody. J-Lo, Ben Affleck, like, everybody. Everybody, everybody on the F list. girl who used to be with Ivana Vina. <laughs> you know, Ivana Vina. What's <laughs> your name is Wiener. <laughs> oh, they call it the Wiener laptop. Or she literally has both. It's both a double entendre, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> his last name was Wiener, and then they also have that on his laptop. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, you've been hanging out with Sarge. What's the news over there? Are you watching any politics, really? Because people talk to me. I'm like, I don't know what I can do about any of that. But what I can do is write this book or do this class oh. or do this with Terry. I know what we can do. I don't know. I'm just not watching it. What are you doing? George is awesome, man. He is uh he's a white hat. Um, I am over there um just helping just dig through this information to expose the truth. 
Um, he teaches us how to be sovereign uh, and stand in our power. So a lot of his lives are literally of how, how to be a sovereign be soul. Sovereign. Are you saying sovereign or are you saying like um, straw man sovereign, like get your papers sovereign? Or uh, Well, both. Both. Oh, really? Yeah, both. He teaches how to be, he teaches you that you're a sovereign soul from source and that like you have the abilities to do tremendous things once you tap into that potential and that power but then he also i remember back in the day he also was teaching us how to unplug from the matrix and uh, calling a strong man i think he has a book that he had that he was teaching people out from this book um of how to do that and he's very aware he's very alert and aware of that that whole uh concept of uh the strong man and, and tapping into your 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 official self the the natural self the natural you the sovereign you the you outside of the corporation um so yeah he's really good at, at tapping into both sovereignties um but uh, but I, uh, worlds i would say those are two different worlds because we have more of a spiritual world connected to the christ consciousness and then and then you have the world that's you that's identified right now that the government was exposing for all these years as you in the corporation putting you in uh capital letters and you know having you as a separate entity so he, he's a his channel is interesting interesting guy white hat i love his energy he's always he's always putting out great content and he's one of, one of the only white hats that i listen to now so, but are you guys um, keeping up with the election over there or that's what i'm asking oh yeah yeah um so we know it's a movie so okay. um we're keeping up with we're keeping up with uh the reality at hand and we know that the well we know that the election possibly is possibly not going to happen um it's we're not going to have an election even though they, that's one of the timelines that they say that's going to happen but there's so many other things that's going to happen um before then and during that time that there's going to be no way to have it and then there's all the troops that are are out like who actually is the president right now and some other things that are no, saying I otherwise. So. Have any, I try not to have any discussions. These people, they come to me, they want to <laughs> yeah. try to trigger me. I'm not playing the game. I'm not. Yeah, right. Well, then when you tap out of that, you you, you start to tap and see, like you, said, like you said, you can have a whole nother reality without even going into that world. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you unplug from the, all that, you can literally live your life and have a whole other experience in reality that's grand and everything without even tapping into that. It's a whole other world. <laughs> I saw that in 2020. So, even though I was watching, I thought there's people in North Carolina that live in the Appalachian that don't even have a TV and they're fine. Yeah. They're right. absolutely that fine. Same they're watching example. the in the same lizards. Mm hmm. They're watching the nature of fish going down to the creek, you know, <laughs> going fish. Shoot, shooting, shooting, uh, shooting uh, quail and, and, you know, never seen, don't even know who the president, don't even know what day it is sometimes. We're they don't have a TV. And it, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and have a barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know. And, then I, and they're having a time of their life. Right. One red so light. So we can exist in both. Right. We can exist in well, both places, and that's fun. what I'm saying. Like over there. Hmm. Which one is more fun? Uh, Sergeant Channel's fun. We be having fun over there. We be having fun on Sergeant Channel. Okay. I think I like. I love his channel. I love his information, but he he's so level headed and he's so funny that like he makes me laugh. Like <laughs> so, we make, you, he makes me laugh almost as much as you make me laugh. And Erica makes me uh, constant mama. You make me laugh all the time. Dang it. I gotta do all the things. time. I've got competition. <laughs> you make me laugh a lot. Thanks. <laughs> so you guys are awesome, and it's awesome to see the perspectives that that uh, you and Terry bring, and and it's just like a whole other perspective. That's why I love you guys because you guys uh have people think Libra about, is about a other race things. Of human. Than, Libra from, is a separate race of humans. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're you're Libra too. No, what are you, Brad? Right. Are you Libra? Sagittarius, Sagittarius. I'm a Sagittarius yeah. with a Gemini moon. Yeah. Uh, that's I have why the air moon and then I'm a Sagittarius. People fall in love with Dad. They're like, oh my God, he's so easy to talk to because Sagittarius, 
for some reason, their superpower is listening to women talk. <laughs> so that's easy. I won't. I won't say panty dropper or nothing, but it's it's pretty up there. You know, it's pretty up there. It's a superpower that it you is. have to be kind of careful with the Sagittarius man. You they can do that. Like, yeah. yeah, for real. Um, listen to women. Yeah. 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 Ooh, it's hard for me yeah. though. I'm a Gemini moon, so my brain's up there. I'm like doing multiple things at once and like multitasking okay. in my mind and in physical in reality. So, so Gemini like moons are very Gemini moons different. love to talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have a good ADHD. listener with ADHD. I'm listening, I'm listening yeah. but I'm that likes to talk. I'm listening. Like, <laughs> I'm listening. Right, that likes to talk. <laughs> and then my my moon alignment's at zero degrees, so I'm empathic. So I can't. I'm feeling all types of energies, and uh, you know, I'm real sensitive to energies, and it's just like, oh man. But my intuition is on. So like when I when I know something, I know something. It's like that twitch you get, you know, um, when you you know you get that 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 feeling where you're like, hmm, and your gut. My first hunch was something. It's usually right. So I, I never go against my gut anymore. I used to, but now when I, I kind of balance myself, I started to, to learn how to trust in your own instincts. And then, um, once you do, then you start seeing, you start seeing things, things start coming into you way before they become a thing for some people. And for me, the, my guides and a lot of, uh, my, I guess my guardians show me things and in, in a manner of like, a like a hunch or something, or like an intuitive Kind of like outlook and then i'll mm -hmm. and then it will happen or mm -hmm. that would that's what it would be um either down the road or i find out immediately and it's very weird it started happening for me a couple years ago more and more but um well, that's so cool it's really I cool i didn't know you could do I that i was like i want to see how that looks it's like the, it's like the, the neopolitan oh, okay. if i move over i'm good <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah yeah see, there you go so we're each yeah, so. running for president. Just kidding. <laughs> You're running oh, for man. president, Terry. Quick, what's your what's your one line? How, how if I'm running for uh, well, okay, but I'm I'm from another country, so but I can run for president. Okay. Um, president how about president of the world? Yes, president of the world. Okay. Oh. Gee, let me see. Let me let me think quickly. What is my one line? All for one, one Ooh. for all. Dab, I'm stalling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, love each other. Love I'll get it to love. Other. President of the world. You deserve. I was hard for me. I was gonna say. Oh, it's your birthright. <laughs> Joy is your. It's birthright. your birthright. Joy is your birthright. Ah, I like that. I yes. like that. Joy yes. is your birthright. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, we like make that. a good card together, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you! You were like Boy, the little cream in the center, weren't you? Like cream in the yeah, center. Yeah, I the little Oreo, Oreo here. We got the cookie. <laughs> wow! I didn't that's realize that. That you didn't realize that? I saw that right away. I was like, wait a second. Ah, this. I didn't think <laughs> it. Yeah, I was thinking Brad should be in the center because he's the guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. That, and, you know, that, nowadays you know. We could do that, but I think we can do. Oh, I can do. Can I do that? Oh, it just. Oh, you switched it. Oh. Okay, I was gonna say they only put white oh, people I, in the middle. I don't know what. But now you got me in the middle here. <laughs> I don't know. Oh wow, interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. just doing. You stuff. can switch the line up here. Oh, okay. You can switch it how you want it. Okay, that's interesting. I like this streamyard. I've never met this far before. Stepping your game up. Yeah. Look, okay, I can do this. Oh, but there's nothing for us to, well, there's no presentation. I can do that. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay, so you can present on here. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know if you were going to bring your clouds or whatnot. 
Yeah, so, I can. I can. I don't know if it's a share icon on here. I do have cloud pictures and stuff. And, and I have. Oh, but um, you're on the phone. But yeah, that's what I, yeah, yeah, I'm on the phone. So I don't know how if I could share stuff on here. But that's okay. We, we can. Um, I enjoy talking to you girls. You ladies are So do are you awesome. have something for the. I can't even really believe like this is literally a year for an election. I didn't even realize it really. I mean, I hear people talking, yeah. but I didn't even really realize it. So, 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 so there's a, uh, mm -hmm. uh, no, oh, no, Rumor on the street is that there is a you, yeah, I was going to say what's coming up for the month of yeah, July. Yeah, what's coming up astrologically, I mean, we've had it loaded, a loaded few times, but are you seeing anything um, specific over the next six weeks or so? Six weeks. Um... Some retrogrades coming into play. Saturn coming into retrograde is going to be interesting. Um, and some other retrogrades that are happening. I see I see it that the purging of of a lot of things happening this month and July, coming into by July 4th. We're going to be seeing a lot. And around, around July 10th, 11th, when that verdict comes out for Mr. Mr. T, um, that's going to be a... a was guilty of 34 counts mm, that's that's the movie part but it, it's going to come out that he's not guilty well it's going to come out that he's uh um not guilty or, or they're going to go spin it to where he's going to actually be arrested and that's when they're going to step in and do all the uh, uh emergency stuff so they can spin it two different ways here i think they're going to do it either or um they're going to probably arrest him just to make it seem how bad the world really is. And then he'll get like exonerated for that because they don't really have any rounds, <clears throat> but the 34 is a calm. Ooh. <clears throat> the 34 is a calm that the, uh, everybody's been breaking down and finding out that it's connected to a lot of different things, including Q posts on the 34, which it talks about the liberation of everyone. And the buckle up, Buttercup, because it's about to get wild. This is something <laughs> strange because someone asked on Facebook, like, um, the uh, why are the black people so strong on the testimony and the witnessing and the prosecution of Trump? Like, it's like, uh, it's really interesting. They got the niggas what? for Trump. You know? Is it the what? The end with you just dropped the info. <laughs> Trump. Oh. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Trump. For Trump? You seen him? I mean, a lot of people, I don't know. People are yeah, talking they, about the news. You ever, you ever heard of them? The Niggas for Trump? There's a group. They literally have shirts and they walk around and they're called Niggas for Trump. <laughs> it's a group. Yeah, you didn't ever knew that. I, th I thought, I bet they're, NWA, they're would have been down. NWA would have been down. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Um, it's NFA, NFT, I mean. Well, I was just thinking some of them, I was thinking everybody's record better be clean because it seems almost like you're going to, they're the people are getting up and just talking a lot of trash with a lot of vehement, you know, very, very, very vigorous. Mm -hmm. And it's like, boy, your yard better be clean. Your trash better be taken out because I kind of feel like after the trial, everybody who's been up there talking a lot is going to get hung out to dry. That's kind of what I was thinking. Like, boy, you better be careful when you speak against certain people because something's coming. It just feels like it's going to be a big devastating wave that, it, that each person that's been up there is going to have to march and answer. Like, is that you on the screen, ma'am? Is that is that you? you know. <laughs> it, it, it is coming. Is you? Yeah, and it's that's coming for all the celebrities that we saw. Um, yeah. We were all like, "Oh, that's a good person. He's such a good person." You know. I got one. It's gonna be like Who that. Are some that celebrities said. that you notice are missing, like Sarah Paulson, people like that, people who they Ooh. were like, "Yeah, I'm doing this," and it's like, "Ooh, they disappeared." Like in real life, you don't even see these people <laughs> anymore. Yeah, like what happened to? Uh, Oh, there's a bunch of them, man. There's a bunch of them. Jim Carrey disappeared. Um, Jim, um, Jimmy Fox. Jimmy Fox came out looking like he came out of the hospital. He came out looking all weird. His head was all different, like different, like ball pointy. Tattoo and he don't look the same no more. Tattoo different. Mike Tyson don't look the same. 
he just ended up he just about to fight um next month and he just canceled his fight um that he's about to have he's almost it's almost 60. mike tyson well so, maybe they all went to simon cowell's um what do you call it the people that do the <laughs> surgery on your face <laughs> Oh, dude, that's so. I just seen a video on my feed of uh, these people getting surgery on their face, and they're taking skin from like younger people, foot, and they're putting uh, it on their face. No, not from their oh. foot. Like it's literally like it's like a face. Off, just, like a face. I was just kidding, but you don't you don't have a button. Let me see. No, nah, I just saw that. I was just like, and he just brought that to mind. Plastic surgery. <laughs> Crazy. That's it. Plastic surgery. Yeah. So, yeah. but the masks that they have for these people are lifelike and they're real. And they, um, you'll see, like when these characters come out, you're going to start seeing, like, I, I looked up the IMBD, um, profile for author Moulton and it matched that he's playing Joe Biden. And like, um, you can literally see the masks on these people, like, like Robert De Niro, he was out in public the other day and, uh, they have Ooh, literally share her head yeah. was like this big when the girl had the mask on. And she turned. Oh and it yeah! Was like this <laughs> fucking big, and it was um that girl from America's Got Talent. She was talking to that girl, and I was like, "That is not Cher." That gigantic <laughs> mask was on her head. It was so ridiculous. Dude, Cher's got a weird. Yeah, they oh, all. But I didn't dude, even interrupt you, oh. your zodiac stuff because you were talking about the retrogrades and stuff. Mm. -mm. No, come on now. Didn't interrupt anything. Let's look at this. Look at these masks. These masks are crazy. And they're very um they're very, very designed. They're very real, lifelike. There's people that like um oh man, you can't even point it. I just pointed a video of a guy, you couldn't even tell he's this black dude wearing this mask and he has this English accent and he looks so real, but he's wearing like a like an old English uh Irishman mask. That looks to a T, you can't even tell he's black, um, wearing this mask. And um, they literally have these people walking around in masks all around us. To the point where some of these are are influencers that we're listening to and getting this information from. This they're, guy was they're the literally most like, this guy right here. Remember that one? <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Look at that mask. That's nuts. Watch that one. That's a wow. Wow. Oh man, that's crazy. Because you can't even tell how real it is. Like it's so real. Just there you go. Look at that. You can't even tell. You just think he's just, you know, some brother from the street. Oh wow. Hmm. That's not a yeah. Person. That's not even a black person, right? So that's much. Oh. No, it's not a black person. No. Yeah, it's like I think it might be a woman. Not even a. She's not, <laughs> not even a black person wearing that. No. That for movie prosthetics too, right? Because I've seen a girl just pulling and pulling, and then she took, and even it came even up into her gums where she was pulling it out. Yeah, I saw that too. Oh, it's creepy Sometimes with the makeup. Uh, me, prosthetic. I have no idea. No idea what. I said, we don't know. I mean, even with the Trump stuff, I'm sorry, but I, I even say, well, we, we really have no freaking idea how deep it goes. Right. With right. Trump, We're going right? to find out, though. It's coming out. It's coming. This is this has been a, a pre-planned event for everyone. And the Deltas are matching up, which is even crazier. So the last four or five years, all the Deltas have been matching up I mean, to the dates on two. How do people feel mm -hmm. about the fact that he went to a Jesuit school? Like he's raised this, you know, that's basically Catholic, right? Yeah. Like, um, they, a lot of people are like, hey, if he gets convicted and he's a felon, I'm still voting for him. That's what people are saying. Wow. So, that's amazing. <laughs> do you know, yeah. what, I find, what I find funny is um, people will believe um trump and elon musk and putin and all these is just one person and i said tell me something especially elon musk 
Don't you think that these people are like James Bond? They're characters that are being played mm -hmm. by multiple actors. I said, first of all, how can somebody like Elon Musk run Twitter or X or whatever it is now, Tesla Motors, the uh, SpaceX and all the other companies he's got and have time to to type on Twitter. I don't know. I If I'm having to do one day of, uh, you know, like 10 different things, <laughs> I'm exhausted for the rest of the week. So how can one person have that much energy to right. do all things? And even Trump, how can he be going on to all these um, uh, every weekend he's got going to these rallies and he's been in try how how can one person possibly do all of that especially at their age like Trump it's not one person like, yeah yeah you know like when, not you, one person, when you, not one when you person. put that out to somebody they have they stop and they like uh uh but but you know you know like as soon as you show an anomaly people actually stop to think about it yeah right. i mean dude there's so many people wearing masks of this and like it's so it's so intricate you have just ma people wearing so good masks that yeah. like everybody's fault well not everybody but people are seeing seeing that this is not possible for one man to be able to be over here doing this and the next day over here and then he's also yeah. got like He's also doing comms with the dudes. So like, like everybody knows that he's wearing, like if he's wearing a, a different color tie to pay attention to his tie, cause his tie means something like to connect to something else or pay attention to this. And then you have the, um, like Elon Musk of the world. We, I mean, we obviously know that man's been replaced because uh, one minute he's trying to put a brain chip in the people. And the next minute he's, he's the meme Lord. <laughs> buying, buying X. You know, so like it's like, who is this guy? Who, who, yeah, exactly. who are these people? Um, but so you're right about that. It's a bunch of uh, it's a bunch of that's why I guess a lot of people tap out because they're just like, dude, well, I just can't, I just can't follow this anymore. You know, it's just so much, so much nonsense. But it's a part of the movie. It's a part of the show. Um, it's like almost, almost to a point is like, can you catch? Can you see? Uh, where you know can you see the difference here like one of those games in the highlight books where it's like can you find the difference in picture like you know it's kind of like that like they leave like a clue for you that kind of lets you know that this is like all stage oh we got something else here so mike remember michael moore <laughs> yes but, but they thought he was having an affair with rush limbaugh but he had on like the rush limbaugh bodysuit <laughs> and then they're like, we're going to bust you. We're going to turn you in. Right. And then he takes it off. He takes the bodysuit off. Fred Savage. He's like, I've been having a hard time finding work. And so he's playing <laughs> Michael Moore. He's playing Rush Limbaugh. He's. Yeah. All of them. Playing like four roles. Oh, my Michael God. Moore. Four uh, Rush he, Limbaugh. He has a full closet full. He's playing a black man. See, it's probably Obama. See, yeah. <laughs> they said Kim Kardashian was playing. They said Kim Kardashian was playing uh, DC Young Thug when I just died. I love and you know one. he was tight with Trump. So that's interesting. I like how they got their little butts on there. Look at their little butts. Full <laughs> 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 body suits. Right, yeah, full body wow. suits now. Like they can literally, you know, down to a T. You wouldn't even know um, that they were a suit. That's the crazy part. The only giveaway is if they allow you to know, and sometimes they'll let you know by the ears or by like the uh, the lining of the mask if they don't take their time to actually cover that up. But other than that, you wouldn't really know. Okay, so I want uh, you run up all. And the guy was like, we can't, he said they were doing a public presentation. They were supposed to go school Pitbull on the product and Pitbull, his little mustache mm -hmm. fell off. They ran downstairs to tell their boss. And he said, don't you understand? We can't afford Pitbull number. We can't afford the real Pitbull. This is Pitbull number six. 
<laughs> he's a stage pit bull. He, he can't come down and sign autographs. He can only talk on stage because he's not a good enough copy of Pitbull to be down yeah. to talk to people. And um, Interesting. they go upstairs and it's like six different guys playing Pitbull. And they all have like this network where they communicate with each other and they have to be a certain person in public. They couldn't date because they can only date the kind of women at Pitbull dates. They can't date their regular girlfriends and stuff. Uh, Interesting. Because they can't be afforded to be seen in public with like regular girls. They got to have, you know, Pitbull girls. <laughs> I guess. Pitbull right. girls. No, I think all the time we go to concerts that people lip sync and people talk and give speeches and it's microphones in the air and we don't know who's standing there. Right. We don't know who's actually singing. If somebody you could know, be like, a man, baby. Behind the when you just give somebody, you're getting paid a million dollars to be somewhere, you give somebody a hundred K to show up and stand where you were supposed to be at and you could be at home sleeping, eating ice cream and stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's the future we live in right now. It's, uh, where reality isn't that? our real reality. Hmm? Like Robert Downey Jr., for like instance. Because Robert that man Downey doesn't Jr. Look. doesn't look like what people think he, he looks like. He looks like... No, he doesn't. Look. And he's not going to make any more movies no more with Marvel. So that's interesting that he turned that down, supposedly. This is a good Ooh. picture right this isn't even what he looks like. Wow. Wow, he looks worse than that. He looks Damn, I didn't know he shaved his head like I didn't know he shaved his head like that. He's sick. Well, yeah, he doesn't have no more of his uh his uh chromy. Think? Omi. So? <laughs> I don't know why I want to feel his chromy. That is not <laughs> Iron Man. That doesn't right. even look like How's Iron Man looking? Like he needs Wheaties. Wow, bro. He's... Who's this? <laughs> like he needs to inflate him. So that's why he's cutting his hair off. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Receding. Now, they're trying to say that they're on Olympics. That's or Olympic. Some kind of... Uh, Weight loss. weight loss drug. Why would Robert Downey need to be on Ozempic? But nah, I think it's a just a cover up because they're on the Chrome. They're on the Chrome Chrome. That's How just a cover up. Because so all this time he's had red hair. No, he's never had red hair. Yeah, since when? I like, I've never seen him. I've never seen him with red hair. No, he's always had dark hair, right? Yeah. See. Well, nobody wants to be a redhead. See all the dirty underwear. <laughs> Damn. He also wears fake eyelashes too. So. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know that. Anyway, I'm just saying. I'm just making jokes. I'm just making jokes. <laughs> well, I mean, it, 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 you're going to come to this realization that everybody's not who they say they are, and uh, that's part of this living in different timelines here. You got one people, so yeah. one set of people that know that all this is going on. And you have another set that believe that Robert Downey Jr. is Robert Downey Jr. and that everybody who they say they are and everybody and Elvis really died on the toilet and all this other stuff. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like they just told well, us stuff. Day, and it is it, like all these people are, you know, they want to say Princess Diane and all these people checked out and they're underground and all this stuff. And, I mean, even with me, people can like Princess Diane all you want, but I'm like, don't trust it. I don't know. I'm just like so skeptical. About it. And I don't know if she's down yeah. in a bunker somewhere like these people. I mean, how did we get to the point where we believe that the people are down in the bunkers or down in this yeah. underground yeah. facility? How did we get to the point where we believe that in the first place? Like, um, By repetition, by movies, by getting told over and over again. Like when I first came online uh, to everything, when I first started coming into physics, I thought Stephen Hawking was the real deal. Then I found out this man had an interpreter this whole time. So literally, he had somebody before he had the robot voice. Somebody was he was gurgling and making all these sounds, and somebody was interpreting his gurgles. They had like a major. Like my friend 
Heidi says he must have a major in gurgling. <laughs> Minor in psychology. <laughs> Crazy, right? So he was like yeah. a plant. Pretty, pretty much. Uh, Stephen Hawking. If you go look it up. Why go look at this find the video. There's a video of him. I wonder who why did anybody Nobody questioned it? Him? Nobody so questioned it. And they had a movie of it. Why was anybody ever Well, listening? people were going he was Yeah, well, he was a teacher. Dude, he was a teacher at Cambridge University. Yeah. And he has a video of him. There's a video of him yeah. as an interpreter. And his interpreter um, he had two wife, he had a wife and two kids before he had this, this disease yeah, that took him out. Oh, it was um, a disease. But yeah, I but never he, knew they how said that he. Uh, that's what the movie. Well, in the movie, they told us that the movie. There's a. They made a movie about this man too. So every time they make a movie, something seems to change in the, in the history timeline when they have to make a, when they make a movie about you. But well, he um he had an interpreter beforehand. It's interesting that he had um, ALS, right? And he lived for so long yes. with ALS because um, I know yeah. I know people who've had ALS. They don't live very. I don't care what kind of drugs. Things start and they end up, you know, like. They asphyxiate, right? But he lived for mm -hmm. how many years with this? So there, you got to question some of this. Like, what was what was uh, what was the purpose behind that? And was he maybe a, a, a I think clone he was or a robot? Yeah, I mean, he he had an interpreter breaking down his speech patterns and telling us what he said. It looked, and the interpreter and him looked like. Uh, like like Han Solo and Chewbacca, like when Han Solo was talking to Chewbacca, and it, it looked like kind of like that, you know. And it was like very much in our faces, and very much uh, they slid him in. And as soon as they slid him in, okay, and they got away with that, here comes Barbara Bush into office around that time, uh, and back in the, like the early the mid eighties, early nineties, um, and she I mean she was a man, baby, and we could say that right now. <laughs> Uh, kind of like Barbara Bush a woman. I don't know. <laughs> there was there wasn't anything very anything feminine know. about her. <laughs> right, right. But back in the day, they, I mean, they, everybody accepted it. They just let her. They, okay, they just say, "Oh, she's a just a, a a not pleasant woman to look at, an ugly, ugly woman, basically." But this reminds me of um, a horse. Yeah, smacking, oh. just smacking on a horse. Just <laughs> ah, just. I don't know why that just when I think of her face, it makes me think of horse Stephen Hawking, I think, was a plan to get people's consciousness to go one direction. And there's people that supposedly got degrees from this man in the University of Cambridge, which I don't know. They were literally probably just typing in stuff, and he was just sitting there, not seeing any of this stuff. So somebody was teaching these kids. Uh, and because he's a professor, so somebody was teaching these kids something that wasn't him. He's too busy. We're trying to look at midgets and and uh, went to Epstein Island. And well, that's you know, what I was gonna say. They he's say he has a fast Epstein Islands, yeah, <laughs> right? That was like his ploy. They're like, okay, for doing your service to the, to us for all these years, we'll, we'll let you go. Uh, we'll, we'll get you a bunch of midgets and you can come to Epstein, Epstein Island with us because that's what his, his fantasy is, was at least. Um, <laughs> studying, uh, studying that. But yeah, there's a video out there. Okay, so that's Epstein. That's Bill Gates. Um, mm -hmm. one of these guys became the exec. He's an employee of Bill Gates, but became the executor for Epstein. So it's like you're his. He's your boss. And then when you when he dies, this guy becomes the executor of his estate, of Epstein's estate. It was very convenient. And I had found that in like the back of um in some type of you know magazine of um tech magazine. And it says convicted sex offender. Oh, it this is actually the 
the story. Interesting. Nobody, and then there was a guy, someone got arrested at Bill Gates' house too. Yeah. Did you hear about that? Arrested mm -hmm. at Bill Gates' house. I didn't hear about that one. I heard somebody got arrested at Epstein's other, the ranch. Or he had a ranch or something, and yet there's a guy that went out there and uh, got arrested being out, like, out his ranch. Police, Bill Gates staff me me member. Yeah. 6,000 pieces uh -huh. of images. 6,000 images. Were stolen? No, no. Of child... You can see it. Sex acts oh. against children. Oh, so yeah. that's what they're saying. They're calling it SA now. They don't call it can't yeah, yeah, they call it SA now. It's funny mm -hmm. because you can listen to Kendrick Lamar and Drake say all these words that we can't say. Right. Isn't that interesting? Right. Like how you well, can they, rap about well, they've been saying this is where you die, right. kill you, blah 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 blah. But if you say something, <laughs> you could report the news and have your channel not the entendre. But the can rap about, yeah actually attacking somebody and we can't say it. They right. can say it on six o'clock news, right? The, the regular the uh, talk. maybe I can say it, but you can't say it. How's Interesting. that? Interesting. Interesting, isn't it? Maybe yeah. it's called the Tower of Babel. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe they're putting maybe. us on Babel. We need to get there's, us a there's Babel too, there, there's too many inconsistencies in society. And once people start to realize it, then maybe the questions will say, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. But know, you know, mm -hmm. how long is it going to take some people? We don't know. Mm -hmm. can't say, can't say. Don't starting, say. Starting to come out about the thing. Uh, there was a, on the front page of the Telegram in England today. With the oh oh yeah. they're they're yeah. wondering about the yeah yeah like could it be that you know all of these all of these unknown deaths in England may be caused to that thing wow interesting immediately all the kids got hepatitis all all of a sudden remember the kids got hepatitis over right. in. Australia people got what was that that they had in Australia they had um false positives to HIV which you want to call it a false positive but I mean mm. is it false? Yeah. was it false? they said that they found the the uh the testing utensils or giving out false positives actually had traces of some kind of spike protein on there yeah will we ever get over this will we get over this mm -hmm. This is some. This is a significant event in history. We're gonna get over this, yeah. But um, it, it's so significant. We're always gonna remember this. This is gonna be something where it's gonna be. We're gonna be telling our grandchildren and our great grandchildren about this, and we're, it's so, never gonna happen ever again. Um, so we, yeah. So in in the Marvel universe, and what I think it was Infinity Wars, right, where all those mm -hmm. people disappeared. Do you think mm -hmm. there's an analogy to what's happening with with the with the uh, whole virus? And I saw mm -hmm. it today somewhere they said that there's a billion people who have died because of since the pandemic. Um, yeah, there is. I mean, there's a lot. They say that one third of mankind will, after all this purge of the pandemic and the purge of uh, let's just say everything happening. Um, with the people, because not, not only is the pandemic happening, but there are also people leaving this plane on their own yeah. accord. Um, so they said that like a huge part of humanity is going gonna, is gonna to not be here on a, a good chunk. I would, I wouldn't say, I would almost say one third, but it would be like a little less than that. Yeah, I jumping guess we'll have to see. Literally mm -hmm. jumping ship. Yeah. 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 So when this is all done, um, and um yeah this is what we're, we're witnessing that right now we're witnessing everybody changing and 
and disappearing off of this plane, literally, energetically. Um, <laughs> it's uh, something we're, we're never going to forget. Never. But we're always we're going to we're going to definitely learn from it and grow from it. Um, that's going to be a hundred percent. And and they're just going to talk about it in movies to kind of remind us. But I don't, you know, the the energetic exchange enough. The the fact that we're living on multiple timelines right now, and uh, some people aren't going to make it. It's a part of the human experience, but not. It's not meant for everyone to 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 be on that wavelength. Some people have to just live the human experience, and they're just here to live the human experience. They're not meant to be a star seed or have these memory recalls. They're here to upgrade the collective. Um, and that's what their job is. And they're never meant to be awake. And that's okay. Um, I think that's what people have to be forgiving of. Not everybody got the same assignment. Yes. Yes. You know what? Yes. I was reading I, um, in the Merlin's book. It's the 21 Lessons of Merlin. And he talks <laughs> about firstborns and secondborns. Okay. There literally like the are some people who this is their first time. And it says basically leave them the freak alone. They're dead. <laughs> yeah. It's like, leave yeah. them alone. Now you're a twice born. You know better. Now get your ass in the corner. Like you yeah. do. But you know what it said too? It even went into genders. And it was mm. saying how you're born as a woman this time and you'll be born as a man next time. And everybody's going to take their turn. Leave those firstborns alone. But because you're a second born, you know that you don't have to change bodies. Because you're gonna get your chance, you're gonna take a turn, and it—I I was just shocked. I don't even know how old the book is, but um, that's interesting. It's not interesting. a new. I book. Need to find book. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. It was, it was really cool. I need to check that book out. That sounds interesting. Um, yeah, reincarnation—all that interests me because that's all. The soul has remembrance and memory, and um, I thought a lot of us have been doing this thing before. We've done this dance before. I know I have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've done this. It's dance not a few our times. first turn around. <laughs> no, not at all. Terry, a great right. example. Well, don't don't use me that, that to be difficult with others. You know, mm -hmm. don't use that to be difficult and lord it over and be a gatekeeper and suppress others. So this book right. is from 2020, 2002. Well, interesting. Same around time when uh, uh, Shana Dean was out. Same Pretty time, cool. around the same time. Yeah. Because she was, uh, I mean, gatekeeping information. I mean, they're still doing that today. They're making they're making yeah. a business out of it, gatekeeping information instead of just giving information. But once everything changes for us, you know, we're not going to need all this gatekeeping anymore. It's going to be all open. What is that? Is that the book? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. 21 I'll lessons in Merlin. I was talking yeah, to yeah. Robert Gartner and Gartner and he recommended this book because I'm going to the UK and so I'm about to Okay. 21 lessons of of uh true magic. Interesting. I'm about to check that book out. Yeah, it is an interesting book. I'm a book hoarder. <laughs> That's good. I am getting to the point where I'm like reaching out for some even more expensive books that are like, I'm um, just in case people burn them all and, or stop selling them. Cause it's to that point where people are, they're getting rid of books. Yeah. Cause of the history, cause uh the distributors, the publishers, again, they were work, they were having nefarious intentions. And uh, a lot of these books aren't necessarily fact or true history. They could be considered fiction, even though they're considered that, um, or they're considered big documentaries or history books. A lot of our history books have been rewritten for a narrative multiple right. times. History books in America are written by the daughters of the Confederacy or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> some... yeah, exactly, absolutely. That, and then you have the the they, old they write thing. stories they want... where slaves have picnics on a daily basis, and everything is nice in their life. Yeah. Right, right. You know, like and nobody knew. Like I didn't know that the slaves back in the day, before the, before even then, th there's a man that had to fight to get the and correct it in the Bibles back in the 1800s 
for them to consider black people not savages before then. Oh, before then, right, it was because considered- um, they made them the, the, the mark of Cain was supposed to be your dark skin is the mark of Cain. That's a sign of a yeah. crime. It, a, lot they people, a lot of people don't even right. know that that's what people in America were taught. And so mm-hmm. when I was in Egypt, you know, we had African American studies. About, I was impressed about how they went to the well and they, you know, they were really talk about Jesus in Egypt, right? And people were like, oh, they're Muslim. We got to be scared of them. And I was like, well, they believe in Jesus and they really go through the trouble of memorializing him. And um, I don't know, we got into the discussion about the um, the book about his grandmother, Sarah. And, and then the woman talked about him having blue eyes. And I was like, I said something and then the lady said, well, I don't think it matters what color. I said, well, I'm gonna tell you this, like you grow up in a country where everyone is brown. So it's different when you come from a place where the minority is brown and we're told that the color of your skin is a curse. I said, so to me, it does make a difference. So Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I, you know, I could see how she would want to minimalize it with the group that we're in. But I was like, no, I just, I wasn't too sure when they said that he had blue eyes. I was just a little confused. (laughs) Not really following the story because it is possible that he did have blue eyes, but the way that it, was written and that was I was just like ah, I didn't really care for that book and and so, yeah but her thing was this was her way of so called keeping peace and I was like I had to let her know like you live in a place where everyone's brown some shade yeah. of brown you know so yeah and and in our our history I mean we we're all connected man we're all connected yeah. especially in, in um America like we're all have native blood and we're all we're all connected to some degree, so I think it doesn't what, matter what shade you are. Is because I know it gets weird sometimes, like people feel uncomfortable, but it's just coming from a place of where you you don't have black kings, black pharaohs, like they don't talk about any of those. Mm-hmm. That people yeah, have to like take a step back and understand. Like, can you imagine if every uh, you were told that all italians were bad and all irish were bad and everything about the people that you're from is bad and then they never told you anything about any of the italians rulers and any history that was positive about italians so uh it's just helping people understand like why do people of color want to talk about stuff like that is because you're coming from a place where everything has been told to you that it's bad but then also too like you could look like even with our family tree stuff like on one side of our family like i can Mm -hmm. go back to scotland in 1500s and on the other side because you got a group of people that were moved around and mixed up and they don't do any record keeping for those people at all it's like you know so right so but so it's, weird. It's, it's just like a, a people trying to understand who they are. So it's not this right. where everybody wants to flex on you. They have some resentment and they will flex on you. And mm-hmm. sorry that you're being flexed on, but under just have some compassion for the people that are trying to understand and trying to, and trying to right. be like, hey, what about us? You know, like we're you know we're not like right. the dirt bags of the Bible. We just want to know the truth and the history. That's all. We want to know what everything. It's funny yeah, that you said it because I just on my timeline it was the girls who said this the marker can't she literally was saying that she literally was standing up saying that and the guy said well give me some proof and she said it's in the Bible like this literally was on my timeline like yesterday where the girl was wow really on her on the timeline that that's it because you're black that's the marker cane and you're cursed. Which, why would God make a group of people to curse them? I don't know. Anyway, that's why a lot of the whole, it's very stressful. <laughs> it's weird. Because, you know, black people, like, we're one of the only race people. You can have very different colors. And there's tons of, uh, you know, we're well, like uh, on the color spectrum. Black black people, because there's so many people of color, you know? Yeah. Yes. So many people of color. So I don't know if you call them black. Black means that you don't have a country. Like, if you're from Kenya, right, you don't right. call yourself black. You call yourself a Kenyan. If they, call Jamaican, a, they call it the you color. Yourself, <laughs> yeah. You don't call yourself black, white, or Chinese. Right, you right. call yourself 
Jamaican. Jamaican, right. So you don't You're, call yourself a color. Even on your passport, there's no color on your passport. No. Right. Yeah, it's just, so oh, it's so weird. It's I so weird how they got it. My gun license. That's the most important. <laughs> on my gun license, it says other. <laughs> Yeah, I believe you on that because that's they should buy it. I have refused to be a crayon <laughs> ever since elementary school. I've been like the most difficult person all my life. So if I've been difficult with you, don't take it personally. No, I, <laughs> I was I difficult know. in kindergarten. Now, yeah. same. I was difficult. I, I guess know. it's like you know, you're at a time where it's just like, man, identify with yourself and speak your truth. I don't want you know? a color. I want to use clay right now. <laughs> You know, I was really, you would have hated me if you were my teacher. It'd have been like, damn, this little girl, fucking. Uh, now I'm ready to color me. now. I literally, this is a real incident in class, and I was like, now I'm ready to color. <laughs> That's funny. Now I'm ready to color. Crayons. Give her ass those crayons. Oh, so cool. oh, yeah, I love it, man. I love it. It's like um, the time. Terry was nice in school, right, Terry? There you were, you were a student. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, nice. yeah, not pretty well an A student. Yeah, but I grew up in the country in a one. I went to there was a one room school, right? We had yeah. like one room. thirty kids in the class, and they were from grade one to four. And wow, yeah, wow. So, yeah, that's cool. Us about the settlers' times. So you had to be good <laughs> in school. Because they could just reach right across the room and hit you with something, and nobody was gonna say. Yeah, or or your parent or, or the parents. Like, why didn't you get? Why didn't you get a a, a ninety percent in your spelling? Right. Wow. And then you then you got you got chastised for it. So you know you had to you had to uh, excel. You had to, um, yeah. And I was, when I was in grade one, there were six of us who started grade one together. Yeah, she'd have got two or three spankings in one day. One from the teacher, one from, wait till your dad gets home, and then you get another one. Damn, it was my mother I was worried about, crazy. not the teacher. Yeah. Crazy. You get spanked by the teacher first before you even get home, and then you got to deal with your parents. That's crazy. I ain't, My parents used to tell me about that, too, but. You know, I couldn't imagine that that nowadays. Was the olden days. That was the olden days. <laughs> the olden days. Yeah. <laughs> nowadays, these kids like the olden don't days. Care. I can still, yeah, you know, um, back in 1962, right. when there was the threat of the um, of the nuclear war, right? We were little kids, and we had these drills. In case there was a, a bomb that went off, we were taught how to hide under our desks. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know? like a, like a, and, and, um, you, know, a you think about it now and you think, how stupid was that? If there was gonna be a nuclear war and a bomb went off, our desks weren't going to save us. Yeah, you're gonna be gone. There was a bomb yeah. shelters back in the day in the, in the schools that I used to, to go to. They actually had bomb shelters. Built yeah. in. We, we didn't have we didn't have one, <laughs> and where I grew up, we were not far from the uh, silos in North Dakota. So uh, oh, we wow. went a bit just like <laughs> we, there was no wow. there was nothing that was going to uh, save us, I guess. But there was a false sense of of safety by doing that, I, I suppose. But it was very traumatic as as a kid growing up. You know, this is you know you had these. A constant, um, um, you know, drills that we have to do, and it was very, it was very frightening, and and not able to sleep. So I imagine that a lot of people went through that trauma in the early '60s. I think every generation they must have created some type of drama to like, don't you think? Like sitting us in front of the TV to watch Voyager explode, you know? Same yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, they wanted to witness it. Air raids. They wanted to witness it. Why are we constantly in a state of panic? Because yeah. because that's the easiest way to program you is when you're in a state of panic and fear. So because well, I gotta I gotta create the yeah. threat to tell you why you gotta listen to me. Yeah. Yeah. Do not yeah. attempt to adjust your television. When you're in a state of panic and fear, it's the easiest way to program somebody because they don't want to be. We're not programmed to be fearful, you know. 
that's something that they they had to teach us and 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 um when when we're fearful we're easily programmed right create trauma right stay in trauma keep your trauma keep you uh keep you down Keep, keep your foot keep the foot on your neck and so, and so you're right like i can't breathe and then and then you're and then they you know then they they discovered this this from mk ultra you know same thing if they keep a person in trauma long enough and mk ultra they discovered that if they can separate the the person's uh uh soul presence aura right from the body right now emergency <laughs> <laughs> ebs goofy now that's the ebs system yeah, I'm I remember sorry. that. I remember the EBS. Now, now it's a, mm -hmm, they just they stopped doing it now. Now it's now digital. Then like, no, and then they like, changed the EBS, well, the EMS. We don't know if they're doing it or not now, anyway, because who has regular TV? <laughs> right. Nobody's paying True. for cable for you to bust in with no emergency <laughs> broadcast. I paid for cable. Right. Okay. Was kidding. Everybody got a cell phone. So if you got a cell phone, you getting it. You getting that message. Everybody got oh, a cell okay. phone. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, because I know. haven't got TV and I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna miss the EBS, but I guess not. No, you got a cell phone, you already in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, already in there. I don't even know if it's raining. I don't know the weather. I don't know anything. It was just raining here, um, right before right before we came on here. It was raining. What's up with the Denver airport changes? Oh, yeah, they um, and I talked to uh, to to Jay about this, um, because he works there. But yeah, oh. they they are. You know, he works this right. He works there, right? Jermaine um, Dadu, he works there. So I talked to him about yeah. this. And he's telling me the inside scoop. And what he says is that uh, they were a lot of, he noticed a lot of the shops in there, they're putting up walls and redoing, moving around a lot of shops around. And they had for a while, they were mocking people with these um, billboards campaigns they have of these uh, kind of like under construction billboards, but they were like using the, the time to make fun of the fact that they have a bunch of conspiracy theories involving their airport. So that was their marketing strategy. So they were like, okay, let's uh, make fun of us and let's mock all these people that think that this airport is a conspiracy. And even I, I even saw some of them. I was like, wow, like they have like the lizard overlords and we're, we're, we're parting our dust while the lizard overlords are, are cleaning. Oh uh, my gosh. And they have a lizard with a, uh, with a, a little cap on little, uh, <laughs> Little minor hat, helmet, little construction hat. Then they, they have uh, out there, right? Type it in there, yeah. Denver conspiracy theory, airport conspiracy theory. Um, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it because there's um there was this guy, and he was talking. And there's a bunch of them. Yeah, and I saw that he was looking for them, and they took them all down. But they were up for two years. They had those things up for two and a half years. So. You know, millions of people go to that airport. Up there way longer than that, right? Yeah. Oh, I think so. Because it was up when I was there. Living. Oh yeah, Blue Lucifer, Lucifer. Well, the Blue Lucifer. His name is Lucifer, for God's sake. Blue yeah, the, the name of the horse is Lucifer. Yeah. Yeah. It's like everything. Yeah, he's looking. Look at how clean that is. It used to be on this wall. Everything's closed off. They used to make fun of all the conspiracies about dia they used to have like posters on all the walls um sort of poking fun at any kind of conspiracies or anything and now i can't find any and there's way all these walls that they just like sectioned everything off and they all say uh restricted and stuff however i have found our little gargoyle buddy two gargoyles so far this one i remember that and the one on the other side i remember yeah, that they gargoyle. have all these no conspiracy signs and stuff everywhere and they also now. have a capstone they just took them down mm -hmm. there's no trace of them anywhere they literally uh, make it look like it's a, uh, it's a clean facility like it's all white walls it's like no identity 
Maybe somebody knows what happened to them. They Michael, just did all that. Lying. Let's find out. I'm live on location. He's live on location. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Right. He's so funny. I wish I could. Live on location in the Denver Airport. Goggles down there? Uh, I believe he's still down there somewhere. Okay. Oh, he said the gargoyles down, down there? Oh, yeah, he's okay, calling no all the spots. No more, more posters. Yeah. Okay. You know what the construction is for? Uh, just, uh, moving stuff around. We're just moving stuff around here. That's all. Nothing to see here. Okay. I don't think Nothing so. to see here. Uh, all right. So here. Here's Shit, you might even see Jay walking around here. I'll show you guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and let's see if I could flip the camera. Now they have it so you can read it in Braille. You know. Where? You read, bro. And then here's it what it looks the like. The name says here. on here. Where it's from. First, oh, it looks like it's got the sunrise coming from. The New the World. Way. You see that? It's uh, really the inverted dome up there. Yeah. Denver International inverted dome. Airport. Dedicated capstone. Wellington E. Webb, Mayor. The Governor Roy R. For Romer, the time Triple R. The time capsule. 100 years. This stone. Contains messages and memorabilia uh, to the people of Colorado in 2094. A hundred years. I wonder why that particular date was chosen. Maybe it was yeah, like I don't know. From when they put it. Yeah, it's a hundred years. Worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge and the AM of Colorado. I wonder what that means. Anno Mundi. The year of the world. Astral Man, Master? I don't know. Claude W. Gray, Senior Grand Master. March 19th. Reminded me of AME. 1994. Right. Because there's Prince Hall. The most minute. worshipful Grand Lodge Grand of Lodge. AF and AM, AM of Colorado. Benjamin H. Bell, Jr., Grand Master. And then down here, it says... New the new world, world airport commission. commission. You go look that the up, it don't even exist. Airport commission contributors Martin Marietta Aeronautics. Interesting. And uh, this one says Fentress Bradburn Architects Zimmerman Metals. This is of particular interest, though. New, new world, world Air airport, airport commission. commission. It doesn't exist. Yeah, that doesn't. Uh, I looked it up. It, you can't find it. New, New World Airport Commission. So, um, AM and AF stands for Ancient Free and Accepted Masons. Mm, ancient Free and Accepted Masons. Hmm. So they're already claiming their sovereignty. Accepted refers to inclusion of non stone masonry or gentlemen in the fraternity, a development that took place during the 17th and 18th centuries when Freemasons evolved into more speculative and philosoph philosophical organizations rather than solely operative nature. Therefore, AF and AM, ancient and free and accepted. Masons represents a branch of masonry that incorporates both ancient traditions and modern philosoph philosophical teachings with its rituals and practices. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, they, they've been practicing this stuff for, for years. <laughs> for years, all right in front of our faces. And uh, um, it's hard for me to like now look at like a lodge now like you pass like a local lodge and then just be like oh those guys are just you know they don't know and, and actually i do know that they don't a lot of them don't know what the higher ups in their fraternity are doing um they don't know they don't get told that information until they graduate to that next level um so it's do. not on and that's if they do yeah, right you don't have because yeah, you don't have to you could stay like a first degree for like all you want it's up to right, you right 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 so it's interesting. And um, I, I, 
I don't think I have it. I don't know if I have any family members, but I know some friends that have family members that are Masons. They talk about that stuff. Um, but all the ones we see on TV, those are the 33s. The ones that are, you know, on TV, winning championships. You mean, Super you Bowl. mean like um, Terrence Howard? <laughs> like Shaq, Terrence Howard, uh, Charles Barkley. <laughs> uh, you know, all those people. Little um, black and white square, oh. pocket square things that he does. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Don't so. like that blade. <laughs> So it's interesting. That's interesting that you show that airport. I wonder if there's a if, if that's the only airport that they did that with, or is this like, or is there a bunch of airports that they just you know happen well, to be in used one? Because I remember when I used to watch like Doomsday Prepper shows that they were just showing those big lots of land and military facilities that weren't unused, and there was like um, a big portion of the Denver airport that wasn't used or something. Yeah, underground. Um, there's a huge you know section of it. Like a lot of people when they when we were watching those doomsday prepper videos and showing those little all that underground stuff that wasn't being used. Mm -hmm. I think they they might have accidentally pushed a button. Totally you know what so. I mean? Like, yeah, they, they totally so. Wondering like, well, <laughs> why do they have that there? Why aren't they using it? Or are they? You know, Musk got a boring company. He owns a company called the Boring Company. Who is that? Who does? Elon, Elon Musk. Oh. Yeah. And he literally, oh, it literally is a company that builds and makes tunnels. <laughs> yeah. Elon Have Musk. Have you seen I, those I, machines? His machines are huge. Those, yeah. Those machines huge. that make the tunnels are massive. Yeah. They're like, and they're they, like huge. They melt, the, they melt the rock and then they turn it back and they cement it in, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's like amazing. Yep. Technology yeah. is amazing, and they can. He called the Boring Company, and he literally calls it the Boring Company, and it's just literally him making tunnels, underground tunnels for. He's been doing this for making underground tunnels for, for years, and uh, nobody even knew that he's owned this company. <clears throat> and it's called the Boring Company, which is kind of funny. <laughs> and people think it like, oh, what a boring company this is, but you know. He's been making tunnels and these machines, like you oh, said, Terry, are like, yeah, like bore, like drill, bore in the ground, yeah, oh, like bore, boring company, boring, I'm yeah, so low. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. And you see, it, and he's got uh, and he's he wants to, he says he wants to do it to have it so we have underground highways for when Tesla, so that way we can get to our destinations faster and we can have a bunch of these underground tunnels. That can take us. Um, a lot of way to like try to pretend like we don't already have tunnels. I mean, right? Why are we, why are we playing games like we don't have tunnels? <laughs> I don't know. He wants to defeat traffic. That's what he claims. But mm. okay, we'll see. I mean, his mom's a rich. Right? She sold him to the Illuminati when he was younger. Yeah. That's what I heard. I guess people want to like make him into this. Thing and it's like, yeah, his mom's a straight up. <laughs> right, like, this is what it is. Right. You know, no heroes here. Right, that's why I said everybody that we see in front of us has been replaced. And there it is. Look how big that thing is. I think it's huge. Yeah. It's like a, like a stogie. Huge. So back in the day when we were saw Charlie Ward showing us this stuff, I mean, right. <clears throat> Even replaced Charlie Ward, I think. Charlie Ward isn't hasn't been Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> He's even replaced. So it's getting interesting. <clears throat> Look at that. I guess it's for one way traffic. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, you can't fit two cars in there. Right. Wait. But they say they got these hyper fast uh trap these hyper fast tubes. That could take you from one end of the country to the other in a matter of minutes. They yeah. say underground. I mean, that just sounds like a cover up, doesn't it? Because they already have that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So let's pretend like this is new and we'll just slap Elon on it because 
why is he such a genius? Why does he, you know, like, right, <laughs> right. Why is he so fucking smart? We're just, yeah, and, and, and exactly. And you look at that, at, at the one picture of him and look at another picture. Are any of the pictures, are they the same person? No, I know because this guy, no, looks I'm Asian. you on. He's Asian. <laughs> yeah. His face is, his face is different than, than the other ones. Asian Elon. Yeah. But then, okay, because you're putting a person in charge of Tesla who you didn't create Tesla, you didn't make Tesla, like, didn't they basically, like, appoint him to Tesla? Like, it seems like, like, it's almost as if he's just being appointed to everything. <coughs> I think that's how people should look for it, look at it, and not like, oh, my hero. Like, like right. I said, he's like he's like James Bond, right? He's mm -hmm. everywhere and can do everything, and people are just mesmerized by him, but they're not stopping to realize that. Wait a minute, I've never he's seen him person. get him in front and put him in front of a board. Well, let's see him do some math. Like, fucking prove yeah. that you're the smartest person. <laughs> Like, how do you know people are smart? Because someone told yeah. you, like... Like I said, when we got fooled with Stephen Hawking, you know what I mean? Now I need to know. We got fooled with Steve. I mean, we assumed Stephen was smart. Because he's yeah. speaking physics and everything, and then we find out that he has an interpreter, and they he might not even... They made another right, movie made Stephen Hawking. It's called Transcendent. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. I didn't know Transcendent was about him. No, they're not going to tell you that, but I am. Anyway, um, right? Because <laughs> he was terminally ill, right? Yeah. yeah. He knew he was going to die, and he was trying to transfer his consciousness into the computer before he died. Interesting. Right? Because I didn't think about the that. Thing? They don't want to lose the mind of Stephen Hawkins because his mind <laughs> is so good. So what they were trying to do this whole time, this is why MIT is working with him to, you know, and um, Epstein, because now Epstein can provide the fetuses and the ovaries and the, you know. The, the physical human, evidence. The, the yeah. transhuman, you know. Connection. So, yeah, his thing with, with MIT is transhumanism. It wasn't just uh, trafficking for the purpose of trafficking. It's we have to have these bodies for the transhuman. Okay, so so let me let me just throw a wrench into this because okay. if and we we listened and we read a certain person's books uh, who she talked about going off world to visit with the uh, Galactic Federation and whatever. And she talked about how they were able to put the consciousness into the physical bodies, right? And 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 the the alien, the I'll say aliens, the ETs were put into a stasis, and they could then move the consciousness into a being here on Earth. Mm -hmm. if, like Avatar. If yes, exactly. So they were able to do that. Why are they, if they have that technology from, from the space beings, and we know that some of these, uh, that there are beings that are controlling things, why would they need to do this? Um, A chip, neurally. Yeah, yeah. why, why do they do it? Through the whole process of Stephen Hawking, if they have, they already have that technology from from um, from the other from from the space from the other beings. So more control. What is this about, really? That's why neurally yeah. didn't make sense. Yeah, because they've already yeah. got this technology. Mm -hmm. They can transfer the consciousness of one another instantly, <laughs> and they already have. Someone already tested in the trials of this, so they've already got somebody that the guinea pig that he was on um to the, the Today Show, um showing that how he can move his mouse with his mind and on his computer, and he's all excited. He's like a paraplegic, and um they they have mm -hmm. that, so they already merged the mind and the computer together. 
So the next step is just them showing that, oh, yeah, we can take your consciousness and we can place it somewhere else. Um, we can download because your whole brain. Really, really, we, you know, if you if you move to that next step, we know that AI is already controlling the world anyhow. Okay, so yeah. well, why do they need all? I suppose it's it, it's going through this is it's introducing it to humanity in a way that uh, that they'll accept it. Indeed, yeah. Look how, it's how the birth old is this movie. Ooh, the brain that wouldn't. Uh, die. The brain that wouldn't die. Ah, uh, they're telling us in our faces in cartoons. I remember having that cartoon where they put the brain in. And that, like, that little vat that's right there on the right the picture on the right, and they're still talking. Like uh, they try to say they 19, were like 1962. Interesting. Okay. There's the brain that wouldn't die. Then there was um, the man with two brains. Mm hmm. That guy. That had to but, be the. But 80s. we know that we know that the brain is only the brain is only the the um saw the hardware right like that that just it's just the operate what operates because our consciousness is outside of it's it's in of the, the body. field around us. yeah it's the energy it's it can also it's like the it's like the wi-fi field in the software the consciousness. yeah yeah you know? the brain is just, is just sort of that that you know what yeah. once we can to help us process the information but it's not where memory resides. It's not where thought comes from. It's right. just the it's just the computing part of it. And it's um they're showing us in our faces that they can do this stuff for years. Yeah. And um they made it seem like it's science fiction or or it's just a movie. But yeah. the movies have a similar truth in them now. So that's what they're they're exposing is that everything that we've learned and even in pop culture has a little bit of uh, truth and reference yeah so w w which makes you think about um you know like the whole story about frankenstein and dracula and and all of those horror movies that we all grew up on and remakes was now knowing what we know is like yeah they're telling us they're telling us the truth that these things were real mm -hmm. but right but we were thinking of them. Oh, that's just a horror flick. Yeah, now it's kind of like, oh, maybe it wasn't so much a horror flick. It's actually some real stuff. Real stuff going on. <laughs> Not a horror flick. We're living in the movie. We're living in the horror movie, action movie, uh, conspiracy, fantasy, all at once. So, what topics haven't we covered yet? Eric, what, what have we covered? Everything. Almost. We, 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 we can go to. Uh, covered almost everything. I like the researching, the research Erica does. She does some pretty thorough research on stuff. And uh, hey, I was trying to find the movie where there's a boxing robot. It's from. Um, what, what, what? There's one step beyond, and then there's what's the other thing? It's not one step beyond those creepy shows. There's Black Mirror, Twilight Zone, Twilight, um, Twilight Zone, Twilight Zone, Boxing Robot. I got think. Black Mirror, Twilight Zone. You got a uh, here he is, Bingo. <clears throat> His name is Steel. And it's funny because then they come forward in the future and they make the one about the robot named Steel, but that they got athletes who are robots. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this thing yeah. is a robot. And he boxes. Interesting. The machine is coming apart and it's part of the Twilight Zone. And when I saw that, I was like, yeah. So when you see McGregor, it's not unrealistic to think that it's a robot. Because yeah, so these that movies about robots and, and aliens and stuff, these are like not nothing new about it, you know? No, not at all. The synthetic humanoids, they yeah. have those. They have robots right. that are like 
It's um, funny, they did make the parallel with the new, the box of <clears throat> steel and then him. Real steel, remember real steel? Mm -hmm. They made the <clears throat> correlation between the two. Ha ha. Sure, this Interesting. Happened. That's interesting that you brought that up because, uh, yeah, I, I remember hearing something about they had the technology that's out there is so advanced that like it'll blow our minds and that's why they have to slow leak it um, like it is. And um, yeah, it's just, My mind it's just, is like a junk drawer. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Right. I know I got one of those twisty ties down in the bottom. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's there somewhere, right? It's there somewhere. Right. Okay. So we kept you all night. It's been two hours and five minutes. Honestly, I feel like, man, could you imagine if we were live, we could just stay up all night? Like, I don't know. <laughs> It'd be fun. We could it's like a flashback. To. It's a flashback. Yeah. Researching. 22. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were researching all night long. We used to sit in a room and pull up stuff like you. you just we did. We used to sit in a room and we used to talk about stuff and you, you'd find it, post it in Telegram and we talk yeah. about it. <laughs> you ain't going to believe this. Right. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to do that every every so often. That'd we be cool. We did a, a day where we did um, stayed on YouTube for 24 hours just to see what happens. Like, like a marathon? 24 yeah, hour YouTube-a-thon? Subathon. They, they, they get everybody yeah. to, to join in, do a subathon, yeah. and get like yeah. everybody to subscribe and join. Like a sub party, yeah. you can do that. Have all different guests come on at different times of the day. <laughs> Let us know if you want us to do that. We'll plan a day when we can do twenty four. There'll be an online, there'll be an online uh, would, conference. An I online would love conference. To Terry just pass out and just be yeah. like, "Look at Terry just sleeping. Yeah, sleep. She can make it. She can make it." <laughs> Man. I can make it till about 2 a.m. and then it's like, okay, I can't. No, you're actually a pretty late bird. You and Jonathan are pretty late birds. Yeah, yeah. I usually I do a yeah. live uh, TikTok after, uh, and I'm up till like two, three in the morning, and then after that, I'm exhausted usually, and I'm done. Yeah. <clears throat> so I do my little, mm -hmm, little live on there. It was cool. Next time we have to do a little bit of astrology and pull some cards. I don't know. Are people going to be disappointed yeah. if they see you and you don't pull a card? No. Okay, so they just to. like seeing you. <laughs> yeah, people can chill. I mean, they just want to pull a card you can, but they don't, they don't have to. This is for the future timeline. When you get a hold of this, for the future timeline, it's already been established that this is for the future timeline. So it doesn't matter when you watch it, this is going to be relevant. We'll let you pull yes. it. So pull a card for us. Okay. I want to meet somebody who does the old school playing card. Oh, you want my you want me doing pulling a card like the tarot card? Yeah. I gotta find my tarot cards real quick. <laughs> oh my uh, god. <laughs> let me see here. Jeez. One day you have to do two. You have to walk past the horses and be like, I'm just walking with the horses. Yeah. I'm just yeah. uh, let's see here. I think my ne and girl. next time you can you can show some of your cloud your cloud images. Yeah, you need to be having a laptop, don't you, to do it? Yeah, I do. Uh, or I can share my screen. Um, I don't know if you can share it on here though. Yeah, but I, there's a button I down can. here. It's too late now though. We're not doing that today. Yeah, but next time. Yeah. You just send them. <laughs> Eric, I don't have access to my cards right now. Oh, uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We'll do it next time. We'll do it next time. I promise. Just, well, I'll be just more prepared. Give us a message. First thought, best thought. What's your message? My message is stay in a high vibing frequency um, because part of this is to stay in the now, stay, stay into higher consciousness, to love yourself, take it easy on yourself. Things will happen in the manner that's supposed to happen. Um, we're we're reaching a significant time in contact right now where everybody's coming online, being activated, having these experiences and synchronicities. Don't judge one another because they're not caught up in that because it might not be their purpose, but 
your purpose, if you're aware of this, if you're awake in this, then this is your time um, to to bask into your own coming of, of becoming and to to know that there's a purpose for everyone here, uh, especially you. So stay in the now, stay, stay in, stay in, the, stay in the present. Don't worry about what happened last year. Don't worry about what's going to happen next year, unless you uh, are planning something great next year. <laughs> and and right, know that everything's talking open. about a plan that you're working on. Yeah. 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 Exactly. But outside and, of and, that, and things are working in your favor. So things will work in your favor. Like that. That. May the odds be in your favor. Isn't that what she said? Yeah. Yes. Because the, the odds are against us. The odds are against us, but they're always in our favor when we're tapped into higher consciousness. When you walk like it, you speak like it, so it is. And it becomes that. Yeah. You speak into existence. And will it into existence. In That's other words, best. because I said uh, so. You just yeah. go around here because I said so. As I said so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This is awesome. Cool. I appreciate you guys having me on here, man. This is great. We need to do this it's, again. Been, it's been so much fun. So much fun having you. Oh, uh, I appreciate you. Namaste. 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 This is Namaste. awesome. We'll do this again sometime. <laughs> For sure. Yeah.